Uh, present, yes, thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, okay, so we'll move on to our next item. Um, are there any neighborhood council representatives today? I'll take that as a no. So we'll move on to item four, which is public comment and non-agenda items germane to the business of, of the commission. Uh, Scott, are there any public comments? There are none. Thank you. So we'll move on to the next item, public comment germane to the agenda items. Scott, I'll ask you again if there are any. There are none at the moment. Uh, for those who are joined telephonically over our YouTube live streaming, uh, please st press star six to mute, unmute yourself and star nine to raise your hand, but there are none at the moment. Great, thank you, Scott. So the next item is the approval of the minutes. This is an action item. This is from um, the commission meeting we had on August 10th. Are there any comments or from the fellow commissioners? Looks like no, so we'll take in, this is an action item. Um, so do we have a motion to approve the minutes from October? I'm sorry, August 10th. I move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. Um, so we'll quickly do a roll call vote. Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. Yes. Commissioner Vincent. Yes. Great, and I also vote yes. So the minutes have been approved. I will sign them and send them back one. So the next item um, is the findings to continue teleconferencing meetings pursuant to AB 361. Um, this is also an action item. So I'll quickly read this paragraph. Recommendation to adopt the findings and determination in accordance with AB 361 section 3E3 that while the state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic as originally proclaimed by the governor on March 4th, 2020 remains active and or state or local officials have imposed or recommended measures to promote social distancing. This legislative body has reconsidered the circumstances of the state of emergency and that the state of emergency continues to directly impact the ability of members to meet safely in person and or state or local officials um, continue to impose or recommend measures to promote social distancing. You would think I would have this memorized by now. <laughs> Um, so this is an action item. We um, are going to need a vote on this. So is there a motion to approve the findings to continue teleconferencing? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. Do we have a second? Second. Thanks, second. Commissioner Gardo. Okay, quick roll call vote. Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Yes. Great, thank you. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. And I also vote yes. Um, Commissioner Scrifano. So motion has been approved. So now we can move on to the public art projects, which is very exciting. So our first one is the Los Angeles Fire Station number 38. And I think, Paul, you, you will be presenting these. Yeah. Hi. Great. Uh, Thank good you. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Pao Pescador. Um, I'm an arts associate for the Department of Cultural Affairs. So I'll be introducing this project. And I actually have not one, but four projects today. So you will be seeing me quite often. Um, okay, so today's, um, the first project we are kicking off with is the Los Angeles Fire Department um, Fire Station 38, which is located in CD15. Uh, the artist for this project is Glenn Loomis with a budget of 17625 Today we will be asking for conceptual and final approval. Um, the project will be presented uh, in a moment by um, a representative from Lonnie, um, Jose Alvarez, who will be speaking on this project as well as a few other projects um, that they have coming up today. Uh, just a little bit of selection 
a little bit of background on the selection. Um, Lonnie put, on a, put out a request for proposals for several art vendors and received a proposal from Green Communication Initiative, GCI, um, that they found acceptable after rounds of negotiation. Um, GCI and Lonnie coordinated a mural competition um, and had a call for three artists for the firehouse wall. Um, Lonnie's program manager created an online survey through SurveyMonkey and launched through the growing community outreach um, list from the Farmers Market Outreach event on May 26th. Uh, Lonnie, CGI, and CD15 all uh, promoted the choice ranking vote survey to the Wilmington community. Um, through this process, they have selected um, Glenn Lewis. So um, I am opening this up for, to Jose, who will be, um, who will be sharing screen um, and, and, and walking us through this. Thank you, Pao. Appreciate all the help on not just this project, but the other two projects um, that we'll have on here. So really, really tremendously appreciate all that you've done for us. Um, thank you for the time today. Um, commissioners, I'm going to walk you through this first project um, that is part of the Los Angeles Neighborhood Initiatives Council District 15 um, overarching Wilmington uh, Town Square sort of improvement project that we've already um, begun phase one with approval from the Reckon Park Task Force on September 1st. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Okay. So this is the Wilmington Town Square Firehouse, um, Station 36. Um, the firehouse is located at 124 East I Street um, in Los Angeles. This is the uh, community of Wilmington. Uh, the artist is uh, Gelson Limas. The title of the work is Vintage Wilmington Harbor. Uh, the budget for the project, as Pau mentioned, is $17,625. Um, and I provided the artist fee, material equipment sort of breakdown for you all to, to see. Uh, with regards to maintenance, um, this project, with all of our other projects, will have a 10 year lifespan. Um, and the Avalon Arts and Cultural Alliance will provide maintenance for this project and the other two projects that we'll be presenting as well. <clears throat> so this is the front view of the firehouse. Um, the mural will actually be the two stories that are on that alleyway uh, length of the firehouse itself that you see there. Um, it is at Firehouse uh, Station 38. Um, it is part of community-led and driven effort for the overall Wilmington Town Square Phase Two project. Um, so this is directly behind the park, um, which is why we're including it as part of our overall project. Um, that alleyway is directly behind the park space itself. Um, the park is located at 124 East I Street, um, and it is known as the heart of Wilmington. So as Powell mentioned, on April 26, we had an initial community meeting at the Wilmington Farmers Market. Um, this was to get a vote on the theme and color palettes of both the mural and the mosaic project that I'll be presenting later. Um, we created the SurveyMonkey um, survey, created this uh, flyer that you see here on the left of your screen, um, distributed it out to the community through previous stakeholders. Um, in conjunction with Council District 15, but previous stakeholders that were involved in the first phase of this project of the overall um, improvement of Wilmington Town Square. So we had a great uh, sort of list of community folks to work with initially, just broke down sort of what the um, back end of that data would look like. Um, the community voted on a color palette and the theme of the history of Wilmington. This is uh, then therefore we had a mural competition um, and we had a survey and then we had an actual in-person community voting event. Um, these are the flyers that uh, were distributed out to the community to let them know um, the mural location, the firehouse is the top mural. Um, there's an additional mural, um, the town square side of the mural that will be um, applied for separately through the DCA original mural art application. But given that this is um, <clears throat> a public property, um, we are working through that, apologies. Um, we are working here to have conceptual and final approval for this mural at Firehouse Station um, 38. Uh, this is, we provided uh, the community with uh, designs of the three finalists. Um, our art outreach vendor, um, Green Communications Initiative, put out a call to artists. Um, we were able to uh, get six finalists. Uh, the community did a ranked choice vote on these finalists that we presented them with, with these designs. Um, there was also a community survey where they were able to put in their vote. 
Um, and then in person, uh, we held a mural vote on the community meeting on July 26 of this year. We were right at the park um, and explaining to folks what we were doing. Uh, the finalist um, chosen, or the top ranked choice um, finalist was Gelson Lemus and his design was entitled to BIM's Vintage Wilmington Harbor. A little information about Gelson Lemus, he is a Wilmington native. Um, born and raised in the arts rich Wilmington community. Um, he's returning home now, um, currently lives in Houston, has done a plethora of projects in the Houston area, um, but this is a passion project that's very near and dear to him. Um, and he's gonna be coming in and um, has uh, the firehouse mural, which is the larger of the two murals. And this is just a quick timeline of the project um, from April to, to, uh, 2022, when we had our first project meeting um, with the community uh, at the farmer's market, getting color palette um, and theme voting survey sort of distributed for the two weeks that we had it. May and June of 2016, we are working on the mural competition. We launched it through the Green Communications Initiative outreach. Um, and then we were able to get six finalists from that. July, we had our in-person community mural vote. Uh, and then August, um, we have applied through the DCA Public Art Project, submitting for this project. Today, we're here seeking approval. Um, and if all goes well, um, we were hoping to uh, move forward with installation by November. And thank you, Paul. I'll shoot it back to you. Um, and one thing, Jose, do you mind walking us through the project itself? Just, oh, do we have a, a CD uh, a council member representative? I see a hand raised. We do. Um, I'm not sure which hand that is, but it's, how do you? Jacob Haig. Hey, it's Jacob. I'm a deputy chief of staff to Councilman Joe Bluskino. How's everybody? Great. Thank you, Jacob, for being here. Uh, thank, thank you for having me. And it won't be very long. I know you're very busy. Um, but this is very, very exciting for us um, commissioners. Um, first of all, thank you for all the work that you do. I know you've been extremely busy and I try to get a hold of Daniel and you, think, you guys have him going uh, 24 seven, but I appreciate all the work that you do and all the work that Daniel has done in our Watts community in San Pedro. But specifically today, Wilmington, um, this one's been a long time coming. Uh, just so I'll very quickly, some context. Uh, this is the Wilmington Town Square. It was uh, a very old, dilapidated, uh, really just kind of a green patch of grass, an old wheelbarrow, and a, and some remnants of some marine items. Um, and it needed a lot of work. And about five years ago, uh, we put together about $2 million, worked with Lonnie and some local businesses, and we recreated this entire park. And it's beautiful. It has this stage and this covered area, uh, it has green light, up lights, um, and now it's become really um, the town square that it really should be. There's activity and there's, um, they'll have farmers markets and vendors and it, there's all this life. The second phase was always to come back and kind of clean up city owned, uh, additional city owned property. We have the fire station right behind the stage and, you know, when it's kind of like your house. You start beautifying something in your house. You put in some new concrete or some new windows. And then it kind of highlights something that's old. And you're like, oh, man, I really need to do that. And that's kind of what happened here. But at the time, we didn't have the money to do the murals that we wanted to. Um, so fast forward, we then were able to pull together some additional funds uh, to do this mural on the fire station um, and some other improvements inside the park. Um, it is important to note that we already went to the uh, Reckon Parks. They still have a commission meeting, and I'm drawing a blank on there. It's kind of like a smaller group of commissioners that they do. So they've already given approval on on all the stuff that we're going to, the additional stuff that we're going to do in the town square. Uh, but we wanted to show you guys and get your approval on this mural that would really complement the, all the work that we've done with Reckon Parks and Lonnie at the Wilmington Town Square. Um, we pride ourselves, we were creating this art district in Wilmington, and really we, we have several murals that are already existing. Uh, we have another six that uh, we would like to look at with Lonnie and really create this arts district. And it, it gave birth to maybe eight years ago to the Wilmington, um, to the Wilmington Arts Walk. And there's this uh, group of residents who are, you know, they have shows, they have events. Now they're using this location as sort of their, their home space. So it's appropriate 
with this. This is just continued all the work that we've already done. Um, I think this will help spur more art along Avalon. We hope that one day Avalon is really an arts destination where people come to see murals. We have plaques describing the artists, but uh, you know, everything costs money. So we'll start with this piece here, but I just want to, I want to jump on on behalf of the council to really express our support and uh, thank DC for all the hard work you do. And we look forward to doing many more projects with you. Thank you, Jacob. Um, I just have a quick question. I don't know if this is for Jose or for Paul, but um, the address on the agenda is different than than the address in the presentation. I just want to make sure you guys can clarify. Sure, Jose, do you item. mind giving the correct address for, for the record? Yes, I'm looking at it right now. The Los Angeles Fire Department Station 38 is 124 East I Street. Wilmington. Oh, NatWest, okay. Mm -hmm. East I Street, Wilmington, California, or Los Angeles, California, um, 90744. When you pop it up in Google, it says Wilmington. Great, thank you. And Jose, do you mind um, sh leave, showing the screen just while the commissioner is asking any questions? So we see the, or, or actually, do you mind walking us just briefly through uh, the mural itself so we see what the components are? Because I know that went through really quickly. Yes, one moment. Apologies for that. Okay. So. This is sort of an overhead shot of the just the mural uh, page. Mural. Yeah, just, just the mural. Just yeah. the mural page. Yeah. Thank so you. We, there mm -hmm. we go. And do you mind just walking us through what we what we're looking at? Yeah. So this is an overarching um, sort of understanding of Wilmington's history. The top portion that you see there with sort of the green cutouts is because there's windows on the second floor of that fire station. Um, and so that's just to sort of denote that that space would be cut out but the top would clearly just be Wilmington wanting to show pride in the neighborhood. It's obviously an elevated building, so that would uh, be able to be seen from Avalon itself. Um, and, and then the bottom portion of it um, is sort of a, plays, plays a lot of homage to the shipping industry. There's a canal there, and then, but there's also some historical um, architecture homes, as well as on the left-hand portion, um, you see the Don Hotel, which is actually the location of the park itself um the, where those palms are is actually where the park is technically located um and that is avalon it's an old image of avalon itself so trying to essentially pay a little homage to the history of wilmington um and then you know uh, sort of highlighting a lot of just wilmington pride by using the word wilmington a lot great thank you jose um does that conclude your presentation Yes, it does. Unless there's any questions, I'm happy to answer anything. Yeah, I'll open up the floor to my fellow commissioners. Um, Commissioner Guiardo, do you have any questions or comments? Um, if you can, is there any way to zoom in? Because, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And should, the gold, sorry. those yes. are windows. Windows, right. yes. Okay. That, I was got just it. about to say got that. Um, that's one thing I've missed out as well, that that's just sort of a cutout of what the, where the windows are located. And um, the, the, the color palette that was chosen, um, what was that exactly? Yeah, it, it's not in this. Um, I realize now as I have the presentation, I didn't include it in this. Um, slideshow it's sort of a bluish but I, I have it for the mosaic tiles I, I can just pop it up really quickly if you'd like to see that'd be great I seem to not have it on here as well um I apologize um Yes, I do not seem to have it on these um, slides. It's in the packets that I sent to POW, which I can populate quickly um, if you give me one moment um, to to bring that up for you. Okay, do you, um, Yvonne, do you have any other questions? Or maybe while he's trying to pull that up, we could move on to other questions or... <clears throat> 
go I back have to no other questions. I those were just my two questions there, um, and no other comments. So we can move on to another commissioner. We yeah, and then we'll that. we'll come back, Jose. Mm -hmm. I guess to that question. So, uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner um, Jimenez, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, not at this time, thank you. Okay, great, uh, Commissioner Ho. None. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Uh, no, just a question on the um, structure itself. Um, that overhang, um, is that going to be a deck or is that just roofing? You know, the, the projected from the fire station? Yes. It's existing roofing. It's, ex it's existing roofing, yeah. It's a it's a pretty old building. It, it This is actually a huge improvement to it. Mm, okay. um, and the colors to denote the windows, right. overhang there. It was just really to okay. show it, but uh, it'd be windows, but it won't be green or or blue or things like that. Right. Okay. Great. Um, Jose, how how are you doing on finding that color image? I'm popping it up. Sorry. Okay. As as he's bringing that up, I just want to say on the probably on the colors and the theme. So the Wilmington's nickname is the heart of the harbor. And when you're down there, you'll find a lot of um, ILW, longshoremen, actually Teamsters as well. And so this kind of played into that theme uh, for the downtown area, which Avalon used to be called Canal Street. And it was changed to Avalon because uh, in Wilmington's heyday, uh, people used to come down to Canal Street to catch the ferry that took you to Avalon, um, Catalina. <laughs> mm. changed the name to Avalon because they would stay at the Don Hotel, which is directly across the street, and uh, and and go from there. So anyway, it's a little quick history on there, but um, it's a port town, so this was appropriate. Great, and I I just have one quick comment, Jose, while you're looking for that. I actually love the mural. I think, you know, it's got a combination of what's the business in the heart of Wilmington area, and then also a few historical historical elements like the hotel. So I think it's really appropriate. Um, Thank you. Can you all see that? I, I feel like I'm I'm trying to project the uh, color palette here, but yes. I don't know. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And can you toggle back to the mural for a sec? Yes. Yeah, I don't really see those in alignment, but maybe that's just me. Um, that's the only comment I have is with regard to the alignment of the color palette and, and the mural. But other than that, it looks great. Thank you. Thank you. Gerardo. So on that note, do we have a motion to approve uh, for both conceptual and final for the LAFD Fire Station number 38 in Wilmington. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. We'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Yes. Commissioner Ho. Yes. Commissioner Vincent. Yes. And I also, Commissioner Scrafano, vote yes. So um, congratulations, we'll look forward to seeing the mural installed. Um, so the next item is again, Wilmington Town Square Park mosaic tile design project. Um, this is also on I Street. And, and, and the correction, it is east across oh, for all, east. all three projects. Okay, great. So, so, so that we know that, I apologize on that. Thank you, Paul, for clarifying that. So I think you're also the presenter and this is for- I Western am Virtual for the next and, one. And final approval. Thank you. All right. So, Go ahead. Um, let me just open up my notes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the, um, for this project, which will also be presented by uh, Jose as well um, from Lonnie, um, this is for the Wilmington Town Square Park uh, in CD15. 
The artist is Katie France, and the budget for this project is uh, 119700 um, the, the Today we will, be we will be asking for conceptual and final approval. A little bit on the artist selection process. Um, Lonnie put out a request for proposal to several art vendors and received a proposal uh, as similar to the last one from Green Communication Initiative where they um, where they found acceptable um, after rounds of negotiation. CGI um, is providing the artistic direction um, of the mosaic process. The proposal included working with mosaic artist Katie Kranitz to provide the following components. Um, a no cost curriculum to underserved youth that will ultimately culminate in the collaboration of the tile mosaic decoration on the squares arches. Uh, source of pride of the Wilmington community um, members and we'll have an opportunity to decide the themes of the mosaic tiles for the project <laughs> directed by Lonnie. Um, and this project did have a public review, um, which as well as the other one. Um, and this occurred on May 26th of this past year, 2022. So I'm passing it on to Jose to um, present this project. Great, thank you again, Paul. i share my screen. And I'm beginning. So this is the Wilmington Town Square mosaic art installation. Um, as Jacob mentioned, this was something that actually was initially discussed um, and agreed upon by community folks um, in uh, phase one of the project. Um, I'll show the demo where they will be located, but there's a reason why there was sort of a colorful element in these archways because they were specifically supposed to go towards mosaic tiles. Now the second round where we do have the funding, we've put in a pretty significant amount of community outreach with regards to youth um, art project work in particular um, that are actually helping in the design and development of these mosaics themselves in conjunction with Katie Kranz, who's running this program. Uh, we're currently still in the program. We did about um, seven, eight weeks towards the end of LAUSD's um, schedule calendar last uh, school year. And then we were just starting up this week or last week and we'll be uh, finishing up um, in mid-October. Uh, for a total of about 13 to 15 weeks with the artist um, doing this work at the Wilmington Youth Center. So just a quick breakdown again of the location of, um, of the project. Uh, the artist again, Katie Krantz, title of the work is Wilmington Town Square Mosaic. Um, I provided a breakdown of the artist fee and just some of the, the overall work. Um, the videographer component that you see there, um, I will expand on further, but it'll be really interesting. We're actually, uh, having a whole video series of these, uh, the Wilmington Youth Center art project work that's being conducted. And the students themselves are going to actually be on uh, recorded video that will correspond to a QR code um, that will go into a tile and folks can scan that QR code and learn more about not just um, the young individual that helped with the project, sort of their experience in the project, and also what um, the history of Wilmington means for them. That's a direct question that we're asking to fit within the theme of the history of Wilmington. And again, uh, main, maintaining um, the project will be Avalon Arts and Cultural Alliance for the 10 year lifespan of this project. And we've been given very specific instruction from the artist as to what should be done in order to maintain uh, the mosaic tiles for those 10 years. Apologies, here we go. My computer is being slow. Um, so this is sort of conceptually what the um, Town Square Park looks like currently. Um, the structure there you see in the distance um, is where the mosaic tiles will be going in. Um, this is just a little bit of background of how this was part of uh, phase one, and it was the initial development of the park. Um, that can be seen here, and then this renewed funding is allowing us to develop um, this uh, added layer of art um, into the park itself. And then just again highlighting that this exact um, project has gone through and received um, Rec and Park Task Force approval uh, on September 1st, so just a couple weeks ago. Again, this is the community meeting um, that I highlighted. This is where we can discuss the color palette and the theme and working through that. Um, we were at the farmer's market um, and can show again the color palette if needed. Uh, it's just not included in this slide. This is the location of where the mosaic tile will actually go. Um, again, 
part of phase one, the, res the arches um, interior are colorful because they were going to have an added layer of these mosaics that were uh, requested and agreed upon with the community in phase one. So it'll just, the mosaic will line the archway the entire way. Um, just wanted to share some photos of the Wilmington Youth Center outreach work of the students actually working on those mosaics, um, being part of that curriculum. Uh, physical elements of uh, them creating the mosaics and the cutout here is actually Katie Krantz sort of mock-up of what those are actually currently looking like right now, um, of her taking the students' designs um, and building it into a larger mosaic tile. And then this is conceptually what um, it will look like. Highlighting that part of Reckon Park's uh, approval process from the task force was for us to add, um, because part of, as you can see, the design will have a QR code that will be a tile um, within the layer of the design itself. Um, we're going to have a plaque that reads, uh, it's going to be a QR code notification. Um, it's going to read that you may scan the QR code to learn more about the youth participants in this project. Please note that the use of this QR code links to a website that is not maintained by, by or under the control of the city of Los Angeles that will actually be housed by Lonnie. We will be the ones um, that will be hosting that uh, site itself. And again, uh, just mentioned that this will uh, has been given conceptual approval. The black uh, marking that you see here um, is an updated version. Um, I just had to sort of redact that element. Um, the artist didn't have time to provide us with a new sort of design of the drawing. Originally, what was in there were historical facts of the um, Wilmington community. Uh, but we decided to, again, the within the QR codes and bringing in the layer of the community outreach with the Wilmington youth participants in the uh, our project itself, they're gonna be answering the question of what does the history of Wilmington mean to you? So we just decided to, uh, the artists and ourselves decided to remove that uh, element of the uh, design. And this is Katie Krantz, she's on the far right. This is some of her previous work that she's done. Um, and specifically previously community-based projects, which is why she was referred to us from uh, Green Communications Initiative as they had worked um, in conjunction on mosaic projects here. Uh, and then another just quick uh, timeline that very much mirrors the uh, mural timeline in particular, because we did a lot of the same outreach at the same time. And that concludes my presentation, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. And I'll keep the slides up here in case anyone needs me to talk. Thank you, Jose. Um, Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions or comments? Thank you. C Commissioner Vincent, do you have any questions or comments? No, thank you. Commissioner Gallardo? Um, just really appreciate the thoughtfulness and intentionality and time the artist took to center this social practice for this permanent art um, a piece. So um, I, I wish all every art, public art piece can, could, could um, mirror that. Um, and it, it looks um, beautiful. So that's, those are my comments. Thank you. Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any questions or comments? Not at this time, other than it's just very beautiful. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's really fun and it's going to be exciting to see. It's so nice that all these projects are kind of happening at the same time in Wilmington. So on that note, um, do we have a motion to approve the Wilmington Town Square Park Mosaic Tile Design Project? This is both for conceptual and final. To approve. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Commissioner Vincent, did you want a second? Second. Super, thanks. Okay, so we'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Yes. Great, Commissioner Ho? Yes. Great, Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. And I also vote yes. Congratulations. It's exciting. Thank you. Um, so our next, our next project is also in Wilmington. It's the Town Square Park Historical Plax Project. This is both for conceptual and final. Pa, I know you're going to be presenting, um, and this is also in CD 15. So very exciting um, to see. Well, uh, welcome back again. Um, so this project um, 
will be installed at the Wellington Square Park as, as staged a second ago for CD15. Uh, the artist for the project is Tony Lewis um, with, with the budget of $100,000. Um, today we are asking for conceptual and final approval um, for this project. Um, Jose, again, from Lonnie will be presenting this project. Um, Lonnie went through a standard bid process for, for the WTS phase one, um, for the Wilmington uh, Town Square project and pre procured um, Lewis and Shoe Plain architecture and, for, and design firm through the standard city agreement um, process. Um, this project does did go through a public review, which um, I know Jose will speak about in a minute. Uh, Lonnie worked with the community led project steering committee, um, but also the Wilmington Historical Society to ensure the accuracy of these historical facts. The community reviewed and voted on these plaques um, in January, um, tw uh, January 26, 2016, as well as on November 3rd, 2017. This has been a project that's been in the works for some time. Again, I will pass this on to Jose um, to present these slides. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and excuse me if I'm not looking directly at the camera. I actually have a dual screen, so I'm kind of pointing to things this way, and I just realized that. So. Uh, sincere apologies for that, but um, yes. Uh, so this is our final project that we'll be presenting today as part of the Wilmington um, Town Square Phase 2. Um, these are the Wilmington Town Square Historic Plaques. As Powell mentioned, uh, these were a approved portion of uh, and designed from Wilmington Town Square Phase 1. Um, as Jacob mentioned, just funding sort of ran out, and now with renewed funding, we're actually able to um, finalize this portion of the uh, beautification project here um, that have always been a part of the initial design of the all overall improvements of the park. So Tony Lewis, um, she is a architect um, and is part of Lewis and Chopin Architects. Um, as Pao mentioned, we, um, Lani uh, did a standard bid, um, call for bids through the LA City uh, procurement process. Um, the current project budget that you see here is actually what we're estimating um, for the actual printing um, and installation of the plaques themselves as all design work was already previously paid for in phase one. Um, so that's what we're and, uh, expecting right now. And again, maintenance um, will actually still be uh, provided for 10 years from Avalon Arts and Cultural Alliance. Um, just uh, some more um, background on the 18 historic plaques that are part of the community-led effort in phase one. Um, again, the park is located at uh, 105 West High, East High Street, sorry. Um, and this also received um, approval from the task force, uh, Reckon Park Task Force on September 1st. This has also been approved and uh, presented to Reckon Park's task force. Uh, so here what you have is sort of a drawing of the overall layout of the park. Um, I know it's very faint. I can lean in. There are these red arrows that you see here. That's actually where the plaques will be installed um, along the park itself. Um, and there are 18 of them. Um, so it literally uh, is surrounding the park. This is the main archway here um, that you see where the um, mosaic tile will go. Uh, but the, all the red arrows here denote the location, the physical location of where the plaques will go in. Um, these are some conceptual drawings from um, the phase. I'll, you'll see some more sort of detailed drawings in a bit, but this is sort of what was presented to the community. And I have here um, some images from that phase one community outreach, the steering committee workshop, um, open house sort of idea boards, work that was done in the community um, to get this uh, element approved um, by the community in phase one as part of the overall design of the project. This is what it will look like specifically. So it's all part, of, it's essentially part of the benches, right? Um, and the concrete um, will sort of blend in with the uh, plaques themselves that are on the top part of them or a 10 by 10, 10 inch by 10 inch um, brass sort of a structure. And the bottom part will have a date as you see there on the bottom, that's more of a rectangular structure, a 10 by four. Um, so the historic fact will go on top, um, both English, Spanish and Braille. Uh, and then uh, the date will go underneath it. And just providing some details about um, the measurements uh, here. Um, the wordings are all a bit different, which you'll see in a moment, 
Um, but we, you know, all the plaques are the same standard size, but we will be adjusting wording to ensure that everything fits nicely um, within each plaque itself. This is the design that was provided to us by Tony Lewis. Uh, it's a mock-up here. Um, so this is actually one of the historic plaques. Uh, so the bottom portion would read 1542 um, with the, the information date here, October 8th, um, also in Spanish, followed by Braille. Um, and then again, just highlighting that this was, we were requested to provide one design mock-up of what each plaque would look like since they're standard size. We didn't need to provide all 18 to Reckon Parks and this was approved by Reckon Parks. Um, and again, highlighting the two specific dates that um, this was community vetted, uh, historic effects were approved from phase one of the project through community workshops and a project steering committee meetings. The two dates you see there um, were from direct community meetings at the park itself, uh, but there was an extensive multi-year community steering committee that met multiple times that worked with the Wilmington um, Historical Society to ensure accuracy of these before they were presented to the community themselves. Uh, and again, just highlighting the dimensions of the project, of the plaques themselves. Um, and then here are sort of historical plaque wordings. Um, I don't want to read all of them uh, themselves. They are some pretty uh, cool facts, um, but each one would, again, have date, the wording on top, Spanish, Braille, um, and then the year itself um, highlights some overall history, some very specific history to Wilmington. Um, sort of, again, within the ethos of the overall history of Wilmington that this Wilmington Town Square Phase 2 project is. And then the, the most recent one is a plaque that is um, in commemoration of, um, in recognition, I should say, um, since he is still alive, of retired Fire Chief uh, Ralph Terrazas. Uh, and then these are some images from that Phase 1 community outreach on this work. Um, some of the flyers that were put up, the design boards that were presented specifically at these community meetings. Um, I think you can see the council member uh, down there in one of the pictures potentially. Um, and then on the, the sort of round table room, that's the project steering committee working through the specific designs um, of the project presented by the architects that then were brought to the community here within the design boards. Uh, and then just a quick timeline of the project as well, again, starting from November, 2015 of the first project steering committee meeting. Um, as Jacob mentioned, this has been a five-year culmination of this project of uh, more than five years at this point, seven years, um, assuming the pandemic really sort of threw things um, aside for us. But first community workshop happened in 2016, following that first project steering committee, um, 17, um, some more sort of review from the steering committee November 2017, we had the community art walk. Again, the project was presented and community uh, giving, providing their input at that time. Um, and then July 2021 is when phase one was actually overall completed when all of those sort of the structure itself was built in and, and um, finalized. And then from April to today, we have been working on phase two of getting these plaques um, approved both by Reckon Park, by DCA. Um, and we are working with the architects from phase one um, to get a signage maker that will that if they've worked with very closely that understands the scope of the work, um, that it will ensure the quality of the work um, with regards to the installation process. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jose. Um, Commissioner Guiardo, do you have any questions or comments? Oh, sorry, there's a hand up um, oh. from CD15. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I just wanted this quick comment. I just want to highlight, um, you know, working with DCA, um, with Daniel and uh, with Lonnie and Rap. you know, phase one was supposed to include all these different things. But when we realized we didn't have enough money, we prepped for them. And so I just kind of want to highlight that because it, we took it as a learning lesson and like the plaques, we put the indentation in the concrete in anticipation of having the funds uh, to put the plaques in, the mosaics, we had the indentation and we put the wood um, to fill in that gap um, until we can put the mosaics. And we purposely wanted to work with the community to have what they would wanna see, but also it has built in uh, ownership and it helped protect this area. So I just, I, I just kind of help myself. I want to highlight um, all, all the work that's gone into and prepping for it. And I do wanna say uh, my boss is big on uplights 
he, he wants everything looks beautiful during the day and the night comes you can't see anything so we have a lot of uplight so these arches with the mosaics inside will have light at night you'll see these vibrant colors the mural on the wall has up lights. I mean, there's a lot of different elements to it that looks amazing during the day and at night, but these these plaques will be the last piece to it that kind of completes the whole experience inside um, inside the Wilmington Town Square. So anyways, I just want to to thank Daniel and Lonnie and everybody else and Rap. It is really, it's a very unique project with a lot of elements, um, but it's just, I think it's something we can all be proud of. Thanks, Jacob. And I just want to say thank you to you all and to Lonnie and to our DCA team and to RAP as well for uh, really thinking and doing such a, a beautiful, thoughtful project um, here and really activating this space in, in, a, in a really uh, wonderful way. So thank you. Thank you. So um, I was going to open up the floor to my fellow commissioners if they have any questions or comments. Um, Commissioner Gerardo, do you have any questions for the team? Um, thank you for the uh, comment on lighting, because um, that's always usually a question, <laughs> um, but we, we haven't brought it up yet. Um, so I appreciate you advancing that. Um, is it possible to go back to the plaque slide? Sorry, okay, this one or the or, or the overarching the, like the this. other, the other, yes. And then um, the material, can you? Uh, it was an example of the material. With an example of the material. Uh, yes, there was an image with a bronze like reference. No, um, uh, did I make that up or I thought I saw that in your presentation? Th there was one in the mosaic. I mean, they are going to be bronze. Um, I, I just don't have that sort of represented of what that's going to visually look like. In the mosaic presentation, there was like a plaque that was a bronze plaque that had wording on it. Oh, okay. And I think, Jose, why that's being brought up is we normally need to see the sort of what the bronze plaque looks like as far as a material finish. So um, you do you have any images that you presented before the community that is it a lighter bronze, a darker bronze? For, I was given this as a one moment, please. Um, I yes. can bring up the um, and the yeah, the reason we're asking this is the commission is pretty, um, you know, we're, we have a we like to be consistent <laughs> yeah. of things yeah. we've approved in the past, you know, yeah, so it's, for public record. Yeah, so I, I don't have, it's going to be, I was given this, the QR code notification here that you see, it's going to be that color of bronze. That's the direction I was given. That's why I use this. I just didn't, okay. apologies yeah. for not including that within the color of the design with the with the uh, plaques themselves, but it's it's going to be it, this. It will be that, um, but with it, it, that's the material, in other words, and mm -hmm. the lettering will look similar to this. Yes, similar to fit within the um, the, the little notch cut out, right? Yes, right. exactly. Got yes. it. Okay. Within within this little notch helpful. cut. Out. Yeah. I think that reference is helpful as long as we can see the material. Um, that's fine. Um, no other comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Uh, Commissioner Vincent, do you have any questions or comments? No, it looks great. Great. Commissioner Jimenez. Uh, no, it looks good. Thank you. Commissioner Ho. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, my only question was going to be the material um, also. And I think you clarified it, Jose. So we appreciate that. I think mm -hmm. everybody has a really good understanding of what it's going to look like and very thorough presentation. So on that note, I am going to see if we um, have a motion to approve Wilmington Town Square Park Historical Plaque Project for both conceptual and final. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Is there a second? 
Second. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. So we'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner um, Jimenez, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. And I also vote yes. So thank you very much. We're looking forward to this project moving forward. Thank you so much. We really yeah. appreciate it. We're very yeah. excited. Yep, that's great. Thank you so much. So our next item is the South Park Recreational Center. And this is um, and three, four, wait, yeah, 345 East 51st Street in Los Angeles, CD19. Um, let's see, it is for conceptual and final and how I think you will be presenting this project also. All right. Um, so, so I, will, I will introduce the project. Thank um, you. Georgia from Arts Bridging the Gap will be presenting on it. Georgia, are you, are you there? Just want to make sure before we get started. Yeah, yes. Okay. Okay. Here, I'll go. Um, I'm on video and, now. Great. And Georgia, you'll be sharing screen, correct? I can do that. Absolutely. Perfect. I'm going to pull that out already. Okay. So I'm going to give a little background on this project. Um, so this is for the South Park Recreation um, Center. It will be um, in CD9. Um, the artist for this project is Ethel Zarina and Amani Holbert. Um, with a budget of $15,000. Today we are asking for conceptual and final approval. Um, this project did go through public review um, on August 3rd of, of 2022. Um, artists Bridging the Gap works with the, di oh, sorry for the selection process. Um, artists Bridging the Gap works with a diverse range of artists and educators. Um, make sure to choose the right, they make sure to choose the right artist based on a variety of factors for each project. For this mural project, um, they selected Amani and Ethel from a list of their committed artists and chose these two artists um, who they've been working with for um, one to three years for a few reasons. Um, besides the mural's responsible nature, their empathetic and passionate ability working with youth and their skill set um, as muralists. They were selected to work together to represent the direct peril and the history of the future of this of this project. Um, South Park used to be run by two gangs who often clashed with one another, one Latino and one black gang. They created a truce 30 years ago and have since worked together to change the culture of gangs and help build a brighter future for the youth of the neighborhood. For this reason, Ethel, who identifies as, as Latino and Amani, who identifies as black, are selected to work together to help represent both voices and share future. So I pass this on to Georgia to present this project. Thank you so much. I'll just share my screen if that's okay. Um, doing that now. So let me see. I've never actually, how do we go to presentation for that? Or is it okay if I, I think go to view, Georgia, um, and then click down ah, and then go full screen. Show. That'd be it. Oh, full screen. Even better. Either way, it's fine. Great, perfect. Uh, thank you all so much. It's a pleasure to hear and listen to all the great artwork that's being created in our city and hopefully we can add some more art to a part of our city that needs it. So uh, Arts Bridging the Gap for, for our history uh, since we began, a big part of our work is bringing out the voices of young people in underrepresented areas and communities. We do that on purpose to leave something in a very public place for them that represents this special moment. We go through a lot of empathy building workshops to create our art. So we had uh, three different sessions with the young people and then on one day in particular we actually had four during the one time. So the first session that we had where we, it was on election day as a way to get the entire community to contribute their ideas as they were coming to vote. And then we came down with Ethel and Amani, myself and another staff member and worked with the summer program with the young people to um, collect ideas, visions, thoughts, talking about what is their Los Angeles, what's their view of the park and what they want we were very specific about what do you want to tell the entire community that you think is special about your park and um, we did talk to a couple of the adults because there is a very rich history as uh, Paul sort of uh, hint hinted at 
Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we were not stepping on toes or doing anything that would cause any problems. So we spoke to a number of the adults that spend time in the park about their experience of the park. And what we ended up with from Ethel and Armani, and as was mentioned, we chose those artists on, in particular because of the gang situation, the truce and wanting to represent both voices and both of them are local LA women. So um, this is the design that they ended up coming up with. Uh, and that has been approved by the community. We brought this back to the community. I sat exactly where that wall is for a couple of hours and got the young people to tell me what they thought. They thought it was amazing that their friends were in that they were like, hey, that's Rashid. That's like, I swear that's Rashid. I was like, that is Rashid, you were right. Um, <laughs> Cause they were like, that looks so much like him. It's like, good, I'm glad you think so. Um, so we, uh, if I could talk through some of the elements of the design, obviously there, um, we wanted to represent the history without taking too much of a negative tone to it. So there is in the middle to left side, a sort of hint of protesting and some of the actions that have been taken in the park. But we really wanted to celebrate their, what they see the park is, which is a place to play, a place that's nature. They talked a lot, of, they drew so many trees and flowers. So we wanted to cover that. And a lot of the colors that they used, we captured. All the colors are defined by the colors that we saw on that. We had huge pieces of paper and the kids just continued to add to it during the day. And these were the colors that um, came out. And the three faces are three students that were there during the day um, working with us. And um, the Forever LA is a very important part because we are doing this series right now. We've just done two already celebrating what is Forever LA in different parts of Los Angeles. We've done the Fairfax area in Hollywood so far and we're doing Venice as well. So if you are wondering about that, um, this is Amani and Ethel, our absolute loves. We love them to pieces. They are such incredible young women and incredible artists. And um, we're very excited to support them. They both actually teach with us as well and have such a great rapport with the students. So um, I'm happy to take any questions about them. Timeline wise, uh, this will move pretty quickly because all of our paintings we do with the community, which means that we get a lot of people with paintbrushes in hand and things move fast. So this would take um, three days of painting, uh, one day of prep and one day of painting with the community. Uh, we would put the graffiti coating on. We work with graffiti control systems to do all of our uh, coatings. They're one of the city, um, I, don't, I was gonna say ordained, but I don't think that's the right word, city approved. Uh, I don't think you ordain graffiti <laughs> systems, uh, but you never know. It's pretty religious to us at this point. Um, so the mural would stay on for five years and we would take responsibility of communicating with graffiti uh, control systems to maintain the mural over time and um, Asia who is the park uh, administrator already knows that the process is she'll call Josh or me and we'll get that taken care of immediately because we all know how important it is to take the graffiti off as soon as possible so it doesn't um, invite more tagging. The budget as we spoke about is uh, 15 grand we try and do things uh, very uh, affordably because we're a small nonprofit, but we also want to make sure we can do a lot of work. So that's why this number is lower than some art projects, but we are still paying the artists a number that they feel great about, and we feel good about that too. Um, just to give you a bit of reference on what the wall looks like currently, wouldn't exactly say it's beautiful, um, unless you're a big fan of beige, and I don't want to judge. And um, it is the teen room. So Snap has just spent quite a bit of money uh, putting in computers and refurbing uh, this room. So we figured we might as well give it something extra special to have them uh, be excited about. Context on where it is in the park. Um, this is a South Park Recreation Center. Um, it is sort of in the center in many ways because you come in through, if you can see my cursor, that's the entry to the park right there. So there's that entry and then there's that entry that most people use. And these are all uh, sports fields. And so there's lots of, oh, sorry, I'm getting, I'm, I had it all the way wrong. Um, they come in this way, I was around the other way. Um, and 
this is all sports fields. So lots of sports, lots of play equipment looking directly at the mural the whole time. Um, I'm just trying to think uh, if you need to see the surroundings of what the area looks like. This is um, sort of what we're looking at with the mural going in there. Um, I am open for all questions and any comments and hopefully we can work on this project together. Thank you, Georgia, for your presentation. Um, I, I'm going to ask the fellow commissioners if they have any questions or comments. Commissioner Vincent, do you have any questions or comments? No, I love the, the life in the mural and I love the fact that they included in the background activism, which is very important part of any community. Yeah. Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions or comments? Despite liking beige, um, I think this is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions, but I just love how um, lively it is and I love the spirit to it and it really kind of uplifts the area. Great. Commissioner Gallardo, do you have any questions? comments i love it i love that the artists were paid um fairly in that budget um and the legacy of black and brown solidarity um as exemplified in this work of art is is just beautiful and something to be celebrated thank you great yes and i also love it i think it's really fun the colors are great and the scale is perfect so Thank you. So on that note, do we have a motion to approve? Sorry, I flipped the page. South Park Recreational Center for both final and conceptual, excuse me, and final. So moved. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. So we'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Jimenez. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Gerardo. Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. And I also vote yes. Congratulations. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you. So our next project is West Hollywood Neon Dog Park. And this is also for both conceptual and final. The location is William S. Hart Park, um, which is in West Hollywood. And I think this is a collaboration of West Hollywood and Los Angeles, if I remember. Um, and I think Becky from DCA is going to present. Yes. So thank you very much, Becky. Go ahead. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, this is actually a, the applicant is the city of West Hollywood and we're just facilitating their review and hopefully approval by the Cultural Affairs Commission. Um, the project applicant is the city of West Hollywood and Rebecca Eman, an arts manager with the city of West Hollywood is here and we'll take you through the details of the proposed project, which is the installation of a reconditioned electrically rotating neon sign element in the shape of a dog at the William S. Hart Park and off-leash dog park, which is technically it's owned by the city of LA. So in order to do this installation, they need property owner approval and the city of LA is the owner, but the park is located in and operated by West Hollywood. So I think that's it. And now I hand it to Rebecca Eman. Super, thanks Becky. I apologize, I'm fighting some nasty bronchitis. So I'm just gonna try and make it through this presentation. Um, and gotcha. So um, my name is Rebecca Eman. I am the arts manager for the city of West Hollywood. Thank you so much for uh, hearing this item today. Uh, this is the second of three reviews that we'll go through with city of LA to obtain our full permission to install this project. Um, the, the city of West Hollywood has a long history of celebrating neon projects. And uh, in fact, in 2013, we partnered with the Museum of Neon Art to uh, celebrate the, neon, the existing neon in our city and um, identified 50 unique pieces within the city itself. Um, one of these pieces, the, the neon dog, um, it was connected to a project that was scheduled for demolition and the owner saw um, an opportunity and, and donated the, the piece to the city of West Hollywood. Um, the city uh, has 
since acquired the work and we've reconditioned it. And we think no, there's no better place in the city uh, than locating it next to one of our most beloved dog parks at Hart Park. Um, we thought that the location along Sunset Boulevard would be just a, a really nice addition to the pedestrian culture of Sunset Boulevard, the Sunset Strip. Um, and it, it will um, kind of activate and notify folks of the Sunset entrance to Hart Park, which often goes missed. So this is the, the on-site location, the real, the real site conditions. The, we're proposing the sign to go here in this nice little nook that's set off of the right of way. Here's kind of a, um, an overlay of what that might look like. Uh, we are proposing and considering that the sign be above uh, kind of an arm's reach so that it would sit about 12 feet above ground. Um, and we're proposing to remove the, um, the existing trash can and, and bench from this area. So again, a close up, close up of the existing site conditions. And then this pink area here is just noting the approximate location of where we're um, proposing to house the, the base of the sculpture. It's a very small footprint. Um, we've designed the work so that it will uh, connect here at the top, uh, which will add for ease of removal in the future. Should we have to maintain the work, we don't have to remove the entire pole. Um, Here's a site plan of uh, the, the project. Again, the pole is here. This is the fence line here. Um, this is Sunset Boulevard up here. Um, this is a pedestrian stairwell down to the dog park. <clears throat> Some additional dimensions. The, the piece is about 10 and, a half, 10, 10 and a half feet tall and 10 foot nine inches wide. Um, it does rotate as you saw. Um, and uh, like I said, this is the, the second of our third review and approvals. We did get approval, preliminary approval from uh, LA Department of Rec and Parks Facility Repair and Maintenance Task Force. That is such a mouthful. Um, in July, we're now coming to you for approval and then we'll return for the um, LA Parks and Rec Commission uh, review before we proceed, hoping to get this installed before the end of the year. I'm happy to answer any questions you may all have. Great. Um, thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, Becky. Um, Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions or comments? None. Thank you. Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any questions or comments? Not at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Vincent. There's nothing not to love about an electronic dog. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh, Commissioner Guiardo, did I ask you already? I'm sorry if I did. No, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca, for, and hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> for um, presenting this lovely project, despite not. Yep. Um, I also don't have any questions. I think it's really fun. I think the location's going to be fun. And, you know, everyone's going to see it from both sides of sunset. And makes I think all of us smile. So on that note, uh, do we have a motion to approve um, item number E, West Hollywood Neon Dog Project? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Howe. Do we have second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Or was that Commissioner Jimenez? That was me. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Ray. Ray. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Gallardo, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Commissioner Jimenez? That was a yes, yes from Commissioner Ho. <laughs> yes, sorry, I didn't get to the mute on time. Okay, no problem. Uh, Commissioner Jimenez? Yes. And I also vote yes, Commissioner Scafrano. So thank you very much. That's super. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank bye. You. Okay, so our next item is, and we have two more items ahead of us before the general manager's report. So uh, item number F is neighborly growth mural. This is in CD3. Um, this is both for conceptual and final. Is that correct? I think so. Um, and this will be Debbie Ortez, I think, presenting. Debbie? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello, Commissioner. Thank you. 
Um, my name is Debbie Ortiz. I am an arts associate in the ADF program and project manager for the Neighborly Growth Mural in Council District 3. Um, the Neighborly Growth Mural is at the One Generation Senior Enrichment Center in at 18255 Victory Boulevard in Reseda. Um, the owner of the property is the Department of Recreation and Parks, and the artist um, is Jason, Jason Chang, our, aka RFX1. Um, the producer of the event in which um, the Neighborly Growth Mural was a part of is 1111, a creative collective, with a project amount being 12,081 um, through ADF funds. Now, the Cultural Affairs Commission has already completed the conceptual and final approval, actually, for the, for the mural. Today, we're here uh, to correct the maintenance portion. Um, we are requesting that the staff report correction, um, I'm sorry, that there be a staff report correction. Um, the original report was actually approved on May 11th, 2022. Um, a creative collective was uh, commissioned Jason Chang to create a mural as mentioned, uh, titled Neighborly Growth Mural as one of eight murals featured in the April 2022 Receipt Arising Mural Festival. The mural is painted on the exterior south wall of the One Gener Generation Senior Center. It was previously stated in the original staff report that was approved that the Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the council office and the community, uh, an office of community beautification would be the primary stewards of this mural's maintenance. However, that statement was incorrect. Uh, the report today aims to correct and memorialize the agreement in place and that one generation senior center has agreed to maintain the mural until the end of their lease, which is October 25th, uh, 2025. Um, in the attachments, we have included uh, the rec and park task force agenda, which was approved. Um, and as well as a wrap staff, as a letter from one generation committing to the murals maintenance. This one was pretty straightforward, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so I open it up for, for questions at this point. Thank you, Debbie. Um, are there any questions from any of the commissioners? Mm, Commissioner Vincent? Nope. Okay, Gerardo? Nope. Uh, Ray? Commissioner Not at this time. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Hall. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, and I also don't have any questions. So to clarify, um, I this is a motion to approve this the Cultural Affairs Commission staff report correction for both conceptual and final. Is that the correct way to? Yes. Okay. Correct. Super. Okay. So um, for the neighborhood growth tomorrow. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Uh, Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Ray? <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote on neighborhood growth mural? I'll come back to him. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. Commissioner Jimenez? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. And I also vote yes. So this item has been approved. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to the next item, which is the intersection art project. This is both for conceptual and final. Uh, location is Matthew Street Park and um, uh, Martika Stork, I think from Department of Cultural Affairs will be presenting. Oh, there you yes. are. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Yep. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, my name is Martika Stork, Arts Manager from the Public Art Division. I'm very happy to present today Intersections, a project by artist Mike Sajo. The artwork will be located at the new Matthews Street Park, Council District 14, Council Member Kevin De Leon. This art project budget is $200,000, funding originated from the California State Parks Proposition 68 grant and includes all costs related to the production of the artwork. The artist was selected through a RFQ RFP process. 
On August 12, 2021, DCA issued a RFQ for artists interest in creating permanent public art for the new Matthews Street Park. We received 37 complete applications. In January 2022, DCA invited six artists and artist teams with the highest scores to develop public art proposals. Each of the six finalists presented their design to the community during a virtual community meeting on April 5th to receive feedback from the community of Boyle Heights. The final artist had four weeks to take into consideration consideration the comments of the community of Boyle Heights and refine their proposals. Last May 2nd, the same art selection panel awarded my Sajo the Public Art Commission for the new Matthews Street Park. Interception is an interactive art installation highlighting the diverse history and culture of Boyle Heights through maps, pictures, and oral history from community elders. The sculpture will be completed at the end of 2022. This project is a collaboration of Mike Sajo with a group of prominent artists that live and work in the neighborhood of Boyle Heights. Mike also will be mentoring a group of students from Homeboy Art Academy, an arts institution that provides art education, training, and support to at-risk youth in the neighborhood. The conceptual proposal was presented to the community at two virtual public meetings held on April 5th and August 30th this year. The design had very positive, positive feedback during the April 5th meeting and was approved by the community during the last meeting on August 30th. The project also is supported by Council District 14. Maintenance. The artwork will be coated with anti-graffiti coating. The city is responsible for the long-term care and maintenance of the installation. Pros. The proposed public art project demonstrates conceptual and aesthetic quality. Cons, none. Our recommendation is for final conceptual and final approval. Now let me introduce Mike Sajo. He will provide more information about the project. Thank you. Mike, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Thank you. Yes. Great. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the DCA for this opportunity to present this project and contribute to my neighborhood. And I will first play the short video that I put together, followed by a PDF with more detailed information. So um, <clears throat> let's begin the video here. The, the challenge of history is to recover the past and introduce it to the present. David P. Thalen. My name is Mike Stijo. I was born in Boyle Heights, that. That next door to the Matthews Park site. As an artist, I take contemporary approaches to historical subjects with a focus on- uh, Mike, your screen is not sharing. Um, can you oh, the screen to see you selected? Oh, the screen's not sharing? Oh, okay, here we go. Share screen. Okay. Okay. Are we sharing screen now? We can yes. share screen. I'll go to play the okay. clip. Okay. The challenge of history is to cover the past and introduce it to the present. David Oops. David. My name is Mike Seidel. I was born in Boyle Heights, currently the next door to the Matthews Park site. As an artist, I take contemporary approaches to historical subjects with a focus on memory reconstruction and storytelling. In 2009, my mentor, Dr. Monomatsu, introduced me to the history of Boyle Heights, the intersection of Jewish and Japanese and Mexican communities. In 2011, I featured the work in a solo exhibition called Dream Deferred at the Yellow. I moved to Boyle Heights because I felt a strong sense of place. I'm sorry, can we up the volume? It's really hard right to hear. With a rich sense of history, unlike any other place I lived before. Finally, a place I could call home. The park site has an interesting history. One afternoon, I came out of my apartment and saw a huge 50-foot fire from the opening of my roof. The two-story green craftsman house 
boarded up and covered in graffiti was an epicenter for criminal activity. A wave of violence, theft, and vandalism impacted the whole community. Then the hell spurned from the inside out and was demolished, gone within a week. Since then, the neighborhood relatively returned to normal and was the beginning of a new era. Within a matter of months, the construction of large apartment buildings started appearing across the street. The neighborhood is changing rapidly and the history is at risk of being forgotten. My goal is to create a space that anchors the community with a resource of historical information about the neighborhood, where a process of discovery can take place in an interactive game-like experience using a personal mobile device to access oral histories and music. The stories are strategically placed on the floor map, as well as the top of the circular seating structure, inviting the viewer to walk around and explore. The pages of George Sanchez's book, Boyle Heights, is laid out on the floor, printed on tiles, with photographic images of the neighborhood layered over the text. The mosaic freeway crosses over the tiles, expanding beyond the perimeter of the pages, integrating the book within the map forming an island surrounded by freeways. Here are some short stories I collected from the community. My name is Tomas Delgado, the owner of Candela's Guitar Shop. My <laughs> grandfather, my great uncle, started the business in 1928 in Mexico. Uh, they had some friends that migrated over here into Boyle Heights in the late 30s, early 40s. They invited them to come over here uh, to visit them and show their guitars off to a store down the street on Brooklyn. And they Five technical churches here in Boyle Heights. Two of them have already went past the 90th year anniversaries. So we're a community-based home churches here in Boyle Heights. Also, we have the technical mission headquarters of America Canada that's been here in Boyle Heights for almost 90 years. That church is the church that provided um, housing uh, after the internment camps, they have no home to come to in Boyle Heights. So the capacity, they, they housed about 90 different fam families there for a few years. Y ahora estamos viendo que esa, esa familia se movió, quedó abandonado la casa esa. Hubo dos veces que se quemó. Se, ven, se venían a dormir ahí este, gente indigente de la calle. Y pues ya había problemas. Y el caso que ya con este parquecito creo que va a mejorar todo esto. In the end, the collection of stories serve as a common ground, stories of struggle, adversity, and triumph. And I leave you with the question, how do you relate to Boyle Heights? Okay. Um, and now I'll be showing the PDF. Is everybody there? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. So <clears throat> intersections, um, okay, is the title of the piece and it examines the history of black, Mexican, Japanese, Jewish communities in Boyle Heights. This public art installation highlights the diversity of Boyle Heights and the ways this immigrant neighborhood served as a seedbed for its residents to forge new American identities. Using digital technologies and archival materials, it emphasizes five themes, language and literature, religion and community, music and arts, education and youth, and labor and activism. Between the play area and the exercise area is a 38 by 27 foot cultural plaza with a circular seating area around the sculpture uh, on a pedestal as the centerpiece. The plaza area artwork is a map of the neighborhood with stainless steel freeways, brass inlay streets that are quarter inch half and half inch wide, brass letters identifying some of the major streets and some QR code tiles ready to be activated. And these are some of the examples of the, the sites that are gonna be on tiles uh, on the map. 
along with the QR codes on the, the corner of the tiles. And, um, and these, this is the production team, uh, which consists of um, Jose Ramirez, a ceramic artist from Boyle Heights, Carlos Hernandez, um, Juan Carlos Hernandez, AKA Heaven, who is also a sculptor and a metal, metal fabricator. And um, so he'll be, he's already made the sculpture and he's gonna be doing the, the metal work. Uh, artist Fabian Debora, who uh, from Homeboy Art Academy, who introduced me to these artists and um, he's uh, serving as a consultant as well as a, a mentor for, for the youth um, to do the community engagement component. And um, musician Ruben Funkawato Guevara is the, the music consultant for um, and the historian of Paramount Theater. And so the pieces, these are the, the pieces uh, of, in their work um, and where they're situated. Juan, Juan Carlos Munoz Hernandez Heaven has the Chico Mcuado sundial, which goes in the center and uh, surrounding on, on sitting on top of a, a bronze base and a pedestal and uh, Jose Ramirez is, is um, his ceramic tiles will be lining the interior of the, the circular seating structure and um, I'll be making portraits of some of the elders that are going to be on the, the surface of this, this the seating tile um, on the top along the top and uh, along the outside of the circle will be 10 historical sites, um, architectural structures from the neighborhood that are familiar. And um, the flooring will be the map of Boyle Heights. Um, and uh, along in the corner here will be a, a, a little clay um, ceramic um, box that was made from uh, terracotta from Evergreen Cemetery. And there's a QR code that tells a story about that as well. And surrounding the perimeter of the park will be um, 50 like elements, uh, the, the community engagement pieces that the youth will be creating. And um, the floor will be sage colored poured concrete uh, with pre-assembled um, brass inlay streets um, that have adjustable screws along the bottom uh, to serve as footing. And um, here we see the, the pages of, of George Sanchez's book printed on tiles on the floor. And the book pages will be printed and baked on non-slip tiles situated within the map um, with photographic images of the, the people in the neighborhood printed over the text. And here we have a brass inlay streets and letters um, of the, some of the major streets that will be identified with the brass letters. And um, four by four terracotta tiles will be installed with quarter inch elevation strategically placed on the maps, similar to what we have here. And a smaller QR code will be inserted on the same tile that will tell the story. And the inner lining of the seating area by um, Jose will be consists of colorful glaze, three inch wide um, ceramic tiles that have some contemporary and ancient codex symbols. Um, and they're already, that's already been fabricated and, and ready to be installed. And so other objects and stories to discover um, will be like this, the ceramic box and, and these, uh, There'll be about 25 of these site marker tiles around the map and um, Ruben's uh, music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s mixtapes for listening enjoyment music performed at the Paramount Theater, which is like a block away from the park. And um, there are many uh, stories to discover. These are some of the historical buildings that will be featured on the outside of the circular seating structure. And um, it may be repeated on the floor to get an orientation of its location. And these are the talking circle um, community elders uh, that I plan on um, doing, making portraits of and also putting along the top surface and uh, to represent the diversity of the different backgrounds and ethnic groups. And um, in their memories, uh, they're the storytellers, so their, their oral histories will be embedded in, in, in these tiles. 
and the Chico Mecuado sundial was made um, is made of, of bronze and aluminum. Uh, Chico Mecuado is a um, is an ancient uh, corn goddess, and um, it's uh, I thought it'd be um, uh, a good uh, centerpiece for this because um, it's a, a symbolic for abundance and um, and heaven will be attaching long bolts on the bottom here to uh, to install it through the bronze um, base and into the concrete pedestal. And this this sculpture has already has already been created like fifteen years ago, but we're gonna ref resurface it and refinish it to um, to make it look new. And um, the youth at Homeboy Art Academy, led by Fabian Deborah, will be uh, participating in art workshops and I'll uh, be participating in mentoring and, and creating art, um, working with the youth to creating the art we're about Boyle Heights and uh, to be baked onto um, hexagonal six inch tiles, um, which will be in installed around the, the park wall, similar to what we have here. And in terms of maintenance plan, um, the surfaces will be coated with Vanguard anti-graffiti coating, like this one. And in terms of production, um, we'll be beginning October 1st and uh, workshops at Homeboy Art Academy and we'll start the mosaic fabrication um, and stainless bronze and brass metals will be orders will be placed and we'll begin fabrication of the metalwork as soon as it's upon arrival. And we'll be continuing um, collecting oral, oral histories um, simultaneously and, and generate QR codes once all the sound has um, been cleaned up and, and go through post-production. And um, art decals and QR codes are, are baked onto tiles and, um, and, and the portraits uh, of the storytellers will be um, created in, on the tile. And the second phase is, uh, involves installation, um, which uh, site prep begins um, on uh, December 1st and uh, we'll be installing the tiles around the seating area when, and using epoxy resin for positioning the pre-assembled brass inlay streets and the names. And we'll place terracotta site tiles on the floor with a proper elevation and mix and pour the colored uh, concrete and transport and install the sundial sculpture and brass uh, base on, on, onto the pedestal. And lastly, we'll um, install the, the name and, and title plaque. And um, that's uh, that's it for my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mike. That was a very thorough and fascinating presentation. Um, I would love to hear some questions or comments from the fellow commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Gerardo, do you have any comments or questions? Yes. Um, is there a diagram that shows the, the relationship to the artwork and landscaping? That's my first question. And the second is I saw a shade um, in some of the images that you, you presented um, over certain parts of the park, but not over um, all. Um, th the question is really about since this is a new park project, and since there's historically a lack of green space in Boyle Heights, um, I'm just wondering what that relationship is between what you're proposing and the landscaping. Sure. Um, the yeah. other is, this is a view, like conceptually incredible. I mean, conceptually just, much needed and I'm wondering what the relationship between visitors and this somewhat highly conceptual um, proposal um, would be uh, was was there a there was a community input process is that right 
Yes, um, I've been researching the history of Boyle Heights for the past like 10 years and working uh, previously doing exhibitions about about the history and and along the way I've met community members who have been sharing stories with me and at that point I felt that the oral histories and the oral tradition was an important thing to preserve and so that kind of it came from that idea to to put it into a public space and having it publicly accessible and so that's why I yeah I love I love that like I love that part of the project I just wonder like the navigation of it you know anyway that doesn't have anything to do with the design um but uh just in terms of how the design interacts with the visitor that that's really what my question was and I so let me formulate my thought on that and maybe I'll come back to it. Um, I so appreciate um, the intentionality in which you picked your partners. Um, Ruben, Fabian, Jose know their work, worked with them um, individually. Um, They have much to contribute. Um, And also I would have loved to have seen um, some female representation because we do have female artists in Boyle Heights. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I hope that that could be addressed in, um, you know, some of the inter- ongoing interviews that you're doing that will inform the piece. Um, other than that, I, I, my big question is the landscaping, right? Because this is a rather mm-hmm. vert- you know, vertical, horizontal kind of aesthetic. Sure. And I'm just wondering how the landscaping will round some okay. of that out. Okay, I, uh, well, we've been meeting with the architect about this, and the lake landscaping hasn't been installed yet at the park, but the plan is that um, the surrounding areas of the play structure and uh, around the exercise area and around the courtyard will be um, native plants, uh, and and so there's going to be some green, green plants there. And then within the inside, we're um, cons- talking about putting possibly putting some type of gravel or uh, plants in, in, inside there too. Um, in the past, and um, fellow commissioners, please um, help me out here. We've normally seen, I know this has been a, a point of discussion um, where we, we usually see landscaping um, mm-hmm. along or even like, you know, conceptual drawings of the landscaping. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, this goes back to the shading part, right? Like where's the shade in this park? Mm -hmm. Um, Especially if we want folks to be observing, um, understanding that the sundial, but, you know, observing and navigating through the map, through the various elements, um, you know, is, will shade be up? Yes. Understanding Uh, a lot of native plants are low to the ground, right? mm -hmm. Like where's the shading? The shading will be by with the, the the red canopies that are on both sides of the plaza area, and in in the morning the sun will cast a shadow, and the afternoons the sun will cast a shadow over that area. And there's pathways that go around the landscaping. There's curved pathways from both entryways, um, and so that's that's pretty much where all the plants are going to be placed. It seems like, and then that leads you to the center, which is the plaza. Yeah, I just okay. want to add, if I if I can for a second. Yes, uh, go ahead. It's a very small, it looks like a huge park, but it's a very small. I know, I know the area. Yeah. It's very mm-hmm. small. Uh-huh. Uh, and that was the, the, the design that we got when we started this project. That's what we got from Recon Park. And they know the issue that because we, we also uh, ask for any kind of big trees that they can you know, put around the sculpture. This is something that they're considering. Um, but again, this is the, the design that they have. It's a very small uh, space. I don't think that they, they have a lot of space to plant big trees around because they don't have this, the physical space for that. Mm-hmm. It's basically it's the, 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 the middle plaza where people will gather, uh, I don't know, and the, the other areas are shaded. Okay, thank you. And thank you. What for was that. originally proposed when the park was approved, um, it concept, the conceptual drawing had, right, trees that were shading. Um, however, sm- large or small, but there was shade there. Um, those are my comments. 
I, I just hope that in the ongoing community engagement with this piece, that there is some, you know, threading of what I, I interpret as somewhat highly conceptual and community, right? Um, so just wanting accessibility to what I think are really important stories. And that's mm. the most beautiful part of that project. That's all for my comments and questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner okay. Gallardo. Um, okay. Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any questions or did, did you wanna, do you wanna hear the other questions? Mike or uh, can I just respond to the um, we do have a production assistant uh, who's a female artist from the neighborhood that we're working with and um, it's really important for us to have that balance between male and female energies there so uh, we're going to be working really closely with her to make that happen. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Commissioner Jimenez do you have any questions or comments? Oh, I, I just really love how it's it really kind of captures the the actual people and it's just it's a very it's very intimate and it blends yeah art with like a little bit of a, a snapshot in time and the history of the place and the people and it's just very creative and it's a very interesting project so yeah i'm, I'm happy i was happy here today thank you commissioner vincent do you have any questions hey bonita <laughs> it, it is i i just love it i think that it is um incredibly thoughtful. Um, it has so many dimensions. Um, it is not just kind of a surface, something that only requires, you know, a brief gaze at. Um, it's something that needs to be considered. Um, and I love the fact that that's being put into a public area. And um, I, I just think it's a, a, a great piece. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Commissioner Ho, do you have any comments? Yeah, just thank you for the, the depth of work you did for this. It's, it's apparent. Yeah, and I, I agree with everything your fellow commissioners have said. And I it just hearing you talk about it, it makes me think like this is a park that you can go to time and time again and learn something new every single time you go, which I think is sort of the poetry and the beauty of it along with you know the layers of history and textures and you know i think it's excellent and very well needed in the community of boyle heights so i appreciate your sensitivity to all of those issues and thank you it's fabulous so um and and finishing on that do you, we have a motion to approve the intersection art project for both conceptual and final i move to approve thank you commissioner vincent do we have a second second thank you commissioner Jimenez. so we'll do a quick roll call vote commissioner gierdo how do you vote yes thank you commissioner ho yes Commissioner Jimenez? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you very much. And very excited to see. We, you, you need to let us know when the opening Definitely. of this is. Will <laughs> do. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think that wraps up all of our um, items before us. And now we can move on to the general manager report. So, Daniel. Wonderful. Well, again, what a great group of projects that we had today. They were, they all were just so well developed and thought out and thoughtful and, and really captured the communities um, that they represent. So just really, really exciting to see. Um, as I get started, before I get started, I should say, I want to take a moment to introduce somebody to the commission. We are very excited to be welcoming aboard um, the department's new executive administrative assistant and commission assistant. We have Stella Belgard, um, who, Stella Belgard Scranton, excuse me, um, who is joining us from most recently from DWP, but she has also spent, uh, she has quite some time with the city with LAWA and LASERS, um, and I believe starting with the fire department. So, um, I, we're very excited to have her. I want to introduce her and ask her to say a few words. 
pleasure meeting everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, pleasure meeting everyone. My name is Stella Belgarth Granton, and I've been with the city of Los Angeles for 15 years. Really excited to be with CCA, and I love art and culture, and I'm a native Angelino, so I'm very excited to just be a part of this project and see all of the adventures that we're going to enjoy together. Um, I do come from the Department of Water and Power as well as Wawa or LAX, so I spent most of my time at the airport, so I have a lot of knowledge with that, and I work with our cheap architecture and arch projects, so all of the lovely art that has hidden gems within the airport. I know the hidden meetings behind those things, um, as well as anything around LA, around just airports, freeway signs, I'm always up for that venture to just see what, what the meaning is behind it. So I'm really excited to be here and just support you all where you need. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I don't have my email set up as of yet, but I will have that set up. And so feel free to definitely reach out. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you for for joining. It'll be exciting to work with you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Stella. <laughs> um, sometimes our is a little bit like a fire. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And hopefully we'll, we'll get to get see you in email. person. Yeah, I hope so. And <laughs> we'll be working together for some time. So definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Stella. We're, we're again just so excited to have you here. Um, just want to give a few quick updates on the department. Um, we're continuing on our, our reopening. Um, we are in the process of planning and getting ready to begin our fall classes at our art centers. Um, we have um, full use of the Barnstall Gallery Theater, which we're very excited about the reopening there. Um, our Madrid and Tosco theaters out in Canoga Park are were just recently closed down, which is not something that we necessarily want to announce, except if it's for big renovations on both of them. So we're very excited to be starting uh, significant renovations on the Madrid Theater and the Tosco. Um, both will be closed for a little while. Uh, Madrid for, I think, a bit over two years and the Tosco for, I believe it's about a year. Uh, but both of those will be come true state-of-the-art spaces for us to be able to offer our performing arts communities. Um, also wanted to share that we received a federal earmark of a million, $1 million um, for the Highland Park Youth Arts Center. Thanks wow. to the support of the mayor's office and Congress member Jimmy Gomez, uh, we were able to receive that those funds and, and celebrate them earlier this week. So very excited about that too. Um, wanted to just also let you know that we're, we have rounded out our beginning part of our grants program. Um, and we have some additional grants that are gonna be kicking off. Uh, we have the Creative Opportunities Optimizing Promise Grant that supports collaborations between nonprofit social justice organizations and creative teaching artist programs. Uh, we also have our Neighborhood Engagement Artist Residency Grant Program. Uh, that used to be our artist in residence program that supports freelance teaching artists and social activation artists and social practice artists in providing community-based support uh, and participatory projects in uh, non-arts venues throughout Los Angeles. Uh, and our last one that we're kicking off is our COLA Individual Master Artist Program, our COLA IMAP program. And that's our mid-career solo work uh, program that we recently did our gallery exhibition for them. Um, our online gallery exhibition, and we're beginning those processes. So really excited to be kicking those off. Um, and then lastly, and this will kind of lead into some exciting events that are happening over the next month or so, uh, the department and the LA Dance Workers Coalition um, have been working together on doing a program that we've been calling Dance in the Districts. Um, and it is going to be selections of 22 dancers and choreographers. Uh, who reside in council districts two, three, and eight, and 10 um, that have re recorded performances for a pilot program. And right now we have uh, the performance scheduled for, for the council districts two and three at the Lancashire Arts Center. Um, 
on Saturday, October 1st from 6.30 to 8.30. So we're excited to be kicking that off. Um, additionally, we're also kicking off Latino Heritage Month, uh, which starts tomorrow and El Grito celebration, which will be tomorrow as well. Um, we have our Watts festivals, um, our Day of the Drum and our Simon Rodia Jazz Festival. Uh, that will be uh, that'll be happening in on our Watts Towers Arts Center campus uh, on September 24th and 25th, and we'll be following up with an email with information on all of these events, and hope that you'll be able to join us. Uh, um, and thank you all for all that you're doing on the commission, and thanks to all of DCA staff for continuing to hold down the fort and continue doing all the great work that we're doing um, with our grantees on our public art projects. Um, and are in our community art centers and theaters. So thank you. Great, thank you, Daniel. So are there any commission announcements? Does anyone have anything to say? I have a quick thing to say. I went to the Lamar Jazz Festival for a few hours and um, Charmaine was there. And I just wanna congratulate DCA because that event was fabulous and the music was great and I wish it could have stayed for more hours, but um, that's it. And thank you for sending the emails to all of us because I think it's really great. It's great to see other commissioners at them too. So hopefully we can sort of tag team and attend a bunch of them coming forward. So um, I guess the next one is the next meeting is October 12th. I I may be traveling that day, so I may not be able to make it, but, um, and then the next commission meeting uh, submission deadlines um, for architectural projects and public art is September 21st. And I think that's it to conclude our meeting. <laughs> so I think it went a little longer, but I think it was important that the artists really got time to explain their projects. So it was great projects today, you guys doing good stuff for the city so on that note does anybody else have anything else to say comments nope <laughs> thank you for your work dca yeah yeah thank you thank you so much yeah. Jeff. i i i wanted to circle back on a request i made um a couple of meetings ago for staff to share panel selection process with us so we understand how that makeup is considered and what the strategy is behind that. Um, there's no rush, but if that could happen so that we're informed about what that back end is, not to get into it, but just to be informed. Sure, let's, uh, we'll you. follow back up with that and, uh, and get back to you for sure. Appreciate I it, thanks. I have a question that I've just been really curious about. If somebody presents to us um, and they're, it's not approved by the commission, what do they do? Do they have to go through us or is there an appeal around us? What happens to those folks? If, if a project comes, so generally what we've seen is if there's a project and it comes forward as conceptual and final, you know, you've had the opportunity to, to respond back and maybe only approve conceptual and ask them to come back. Um, it's a good question on going around. I, I'm not actually familiar with what that process is. I think that it needs the approval of the commission. Um, it, if, doesn't it have to come back to us? Yeah, again? based on the administrative code, it would need to come back through the commission. As I understand it, if there's a specific project or question that you have, I'm happy to look into it. No, I was just curious. I was hoping maybe the city attorney could give it sh sh shed some light on it. I'm just curious as to what happens to these folks. Well, we have uh, we have Mike Dundas here with us today. Mike is sitting in for Josh Templet, um, who is our city attorney, who's sitting in for Tania Isagere. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so Mike, if you if you have some thoughts on this, feel free. Uh, Commissioner, I. Um... Because I am too removed from cultural affairs, I don't have an answer to a specific question off the top of my head. I do have a couple of comments, though. Um, at the at the very least, I do know that uh, if the commission takes an action to say to affirmatively reject a project, that the city council, under its authority under the charter, Charter Section 245, can 
take up that item and, and veto your rejection and send it back to you on its own. So if, if an applicant has the ability to get the council's attention to do that, um, it could you know basically veto your rejection and put it back on your plate again to take another decision. Um, but with respect to, do they have some other sort of ancillary appeal right? Um, I would have to look up in the admin code. I apologize. I, again, I'm not, I'm not familiar with it, with the cultural affairs code sections, but I can I can follow up and send an email to Daniel and he can communicate that to you if you like. Thank you. Yeah. Is that it? Here we go now. Yes, <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. Sorry, it went a little longer. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. You're Thank awesome. You everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you.